1965, a comedy TV show debuted and it turned out to be pretty popular. It was a spoof of the 007 movies. It was called Get Smart. Don Adams played a bumbling spy with all kinds of goofy gadgets like a shoe phone, if you can imagine that. And if James Bond had cool cars, Maxwell Smart had to have one as well. But while Bond got the Aston Martin, Maxwell Smart got a Sunbeam Tiger. Now remember, the Tiger is the performance version based on the Alpine. There's a V8 under the hood that Carol Shelby came up with the idea for. But here's an interesting bit of TV trivia. When they were actually shooting the show, they couldn't use a Tiger with that V8 under the hood because there wasn't enough room to put all the spy gadgets inside that they needed. After the Tiger, Maxwell Smart used a Carmen Ghia for a while until in the very last season, he transitioned to an Opel GT. This was being sold through Buick dealers. It was made in Germany. And the idea was to put it in the show to appeal to a younger demographic. By the way, if you watch the 2008 movie, the Get Smart movie with Steve Carell and Anne Hathaway, the Tiger, the Carmen Ghia, and the Opel GT all get cameos. Calling Maxwell Smart, your car is here. It's a 66 Sunbeam Tiger. Well, this is a real one. There's a thing called the Sunbeam Tiger Owners Association. This has been verified. Keep in mind, there was also a thing called the Sunbeam Alpine, which had a little four-cylinder engine. Ar otherwise, largely a similar car, at least to look at. But I'm not so high on this purple paint. Otherwise, it's a pretty good presentation. Yeah, there's actually been a number of modifications. Inside, it's been modified inside. It's got that purple paint on the outside. I don't know. My gut says if I had a Sunbeam Tiger, I'd want it to look pretty close to the way it did. And, of course, I think I'd really want it to be red like Maxwell Smarts. And, you know, the interesting story, as Mike was mentioning, Carol Shelby was involved. Carol Shelby's big goal, of course, was to get the contract to produce these in California. However, ultimately, they decided to do it at the Roots Factory in England. He got a royalty out of it, but not quite as much money as he thought he could get with the contract. Well, these, this one has a 289. A lot of these also had 260 cubic inch V8s. And while the Ford 9 inch and 8 inch rear axles were available to Roots, these have something called the Spicer Model 44, the Dana 44 rear axle, which is a pretty rugged piece. Now, here's the rub the Roots Group was acquired by Chrysler, who didn't want a Ford V8 in their sport, hot rod sports car. However, the Chrysler Plymouth Dodge 273 or 318 or 340 would not fit in this. So it continued with a Ford 289, although the Ford name was nowhere to be found after Roots was purchased by Chrysler. That's right, Mike. One of the problems with the 273 is its center sump oil pan. The Ford 289 and 260 have a front sump pan, which is more suited to the Sunbeam's suspension and frame architecture. Akin to the early Cobras. Now, you could take an Alpine uh, and turn it into shop, a Tiger. All Miles the parts are available. And that's why so you want to sell this car after it's been tacked, checked by the Tiger Authentication Committee of the Sunbeam Tiger Owners Association, uh, as this one has to prove that it was born a real Tiger. By the way, we mentioned the fact that this was being used as the uh, car for Get Smart. The original pilot. They used a Ferrari 250. They just couldn't afford to modify it during the course of the series. $39,000, and that sounds like a deal for a Sunbeam Tiger.